Thank you for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields diving right into the tropics, thinking of my friends in the Western Caribbean now. Uh, this is Ian turning into a powerful hurricane, rapidly intensifying, and you see those brighter colors telling me a lot of thunderstorm tops with it are just building up and up. And now you can see it on the left-hand side of your screen. Right-hand side, another spin out there in the Atlantic, but it looks like that'll stay there. And a buildup of moisture that'll increase rain and storms for the Eastern Caribbean. I'll get to my friends in Barbados, St. Lucia, Trinidad, and Tobago, ahead. Let's get back to uh, Ian. Again, working its way away from the Cayman Islands. Still heavier weather. Grand Cayman all on track. Thank you for your trust with these systems. Uh, but this will lift up to the north, of course, moving into Cuba. Now, yesterday, there was a big split in the models. But today, everything is coming together. And that's going to bring it right over western Cuba. As expected, the hurricane conditions moving in tonight and tomorrow with an intensifying hurricane. And then this will ride up the west coast of Florida, very close to Tampa, by the time we get into Wednesday and Thursday. Now, here's the official forecast track. Still, the hurricane warnings out for Grand Cayman, but those will be dropped. Hurricane warnings out for western Cuba and the tropical storm warnings out for central uh, west portions of Cuba. This will become a major hurricane even as soon as tonight, then work its way up to the eastern Gulf of Mexico with a land fall or just skirting the coast for a long period of time Wednesday into Thursday near the Tampa St. Petersburg area. So uh, a 100% chance of seeing those tropical or rather hurricane conditions in western Cuba. That's why we're thinking of our friends and family there. And then the hurricane conditions are going to be likely as we get into the northeastern sections of the Gulf of Mexico, pushing into north central sections of, uh, of Florida and north Florida as well down the road. So again, the likelihood of hurricane conditions only growing as this system, Hurricane Ian, continues to intensify. It's over the warmest waters right now in the entire Atlantic Basin. So the heaviest weather is starting to work into Cuba, and it will only go downhill tonight, then working its way to the north. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, working its way up toward Florida. The earliest onset of some of those uh, tropical storm rain bands working in by the time we get into tomorrow morning for South Florida. But better news for the Cayman Islands as this pulls away. Models take this right over western Florida. Still a little bit of a split in some of the models, but as I always mention, some models are good, some are not so good, and the European and GFS, uh, the American model, those are the two best models to keep an eye out for. And then I look at the steering conditions as well, what's going on. So with that, this system, a hurricane, is going to lift into western Cuba, then lift up to the north. And because the steering conditions are weak, uh, eventually it is going to stall out near Tampa. A terrible scenario up there. Uh, historic flooding levels for the Tampa, uh, Tampa Bay area. Then this will gradually lift up to the north, and there'll be some wind shear down the road that will eventually weaken it. But you can see the rain in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. You see some of those uh, purple shadings you're seeing there, upwards of 15 to 20 inches of rain. And as this progresses to the north up there, we're going to see that sliding inland as well with uh, some of the rainfall totals that will be measured in feet. So this is some of what we just missed out in the Cayman Islands, thankfully. Not that we have not had big weather across Grand Cayman, uh, but the core of it did stay offshore. So as I mentioned, thank you for your trust with these systems. Here's the American model, which is pretty much the same as the European model for the most part at this time. This takes it up tomorrow morning, heaviest weather tonight and tomorrow morning in western Cuba, an intensifying landfall. It's not going to be over land too, too long, so that's why it's not going to weaken. It could become a Category 4, if not a Category 5 hurricane as it crawls up into the northeastern Gulf of Mexico. A lot of questions coming out of the Bahamas about what's going to happen. Well, for the most part, this is off to the west. You see it kind of stalling out. This is by Thursday morning near the Tampa area. Still a powerful major hurricane at that time. Should be some gradual weakening, but a long duration event in Florida. And again, I defer to my colleagues there. I live in Florida, so these videos may not be quite as frequent the next couple days. So uh, fortunately, uh, the states are blessed with wonderful uh, meteorologists that can handle this system. But looking elsewhere in the Caribbean as that system lifts in, we will see some stronger tropical waves, but I'm not seeing any signs of development as we get back toward the Dominican Republic, Haiti, as we swing back toward Puerto Rico. So some good news there. So technically still the hurricane warning up for Grand Cayman. That is going to be dropped most likely in the next couple hours with the next advisory. Still some of the gusts, 50 to 
60 miles per hour. We've had the flooding issues, of course. Please be mindful of that still. And lots of the standing water that will even be around in locations tomorrow as things uh, try to get back to uh, normal. Rest of the day as we get over toward uh, Little Cayman, for example, then we swing back toward uh, Tibet's turn. We're talking about the scattered rain. You could see some rain bands working in and some gustier winds every now and then. Of course, the seas are going to stay high. West Cuba, though, we're looking at winds over 100 miles per hour. If this intensifies quickly, some of the gusts could be over 120 to about 130 miles per hour. Western Cuba, though, or I'm sorry, eastern Cuba, much better shape. Obviously, a huge difference there. Back to Jamaica the next couple days. Scattered showers and storms, a 50% chance of rain each day. We'll see the scattering of rain and storms, not for all of us, but again, a pretty active pattern. We're going to see several tropical waves moving by. Same thing for my friends in the Virgin Islands, Anguilla, Antigua, and Barbuda, Montserrat, swinging back towards St. John, St. Martin's, uh, Guadalupe, Dominica, Martinique, St. Lucia. No hurricane threats at this time, which is good. Tracking the tropical waves, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados down through Guyana. Yeah, we'll get some batches of rain, but I'm not seeing anything really behind Ian. There's one spot I'm watching off the coast of Africa. That's the one that could develop. It should develop into the next name system, but I'm not seeing it kind of marching its way across so that is some uh, good news there. Hopefully we can keep the rest of the stuff out to sea as we go through the season. Still a lot of season to go through. Again, October itself could be very active. So thank you for your trust uh, with this uh, channel, trying to keep my friends safe, of course, across the Caribbean. Thinking of all of you. Have a great day.